traditional sports, usually the difference between first and last is something that's neurological or cognitive. And there's a lot of strategies you can utilize to improve those metrics. So if you look at a sport like baseball, you don't have to be very physically fit at all. You just need good hand-eye coordination and good reaction time and base level of strength. And then, you know, do you, do you feet work? You can walk around the bases. Um, and we can leverage a lot of these, you know, we, we can leverage a lot of these strategies in different realms. And so uh, esports is highly competitive. I love uh, their, their spirits. And then I also um, uh, find that I can leverage a lot of these nutrition strategies to improve their performance. Uh, you also mentioned, um, and, and so to that to that esports thing, you know, I'm a director of nutrition over at One HP. Uh, I am contracted with many top tier S tier organizations, and I help them out with uh, everything nutrition related. So I'm doing that still currently. I teach at a couple of universities, uh, you know, nutrition classes. I'm a published scientific author. I do peer review for a lot of journals. Um, I kind of do it all. Um, so, so yeah, and, and nutrition and specifically nutrition for cognitive performance is, is really my jam. Um, but for content creators also, I can say that there's a lot of really fun benefits to it as well, especially if you're on camera all the time. Like I can talk about some of the benefits of nutrition there, but um, mm -hmm. like I've worked with a lot of physique athletes and bodybuilders. And um, even there are some fun little tricks that you can do to add like little flush to your skin tone and things like that to make it look better on, on camera. So, um, yeah, I've worked with a lot of content creators too, man, folks. So you heard it here first, man. Best of the best. Nevertheless, starting off our discussion right here, right now with the one and only Casey Thomas registered dietitian over here on the official first episode of the one HP podcast for nutrition with gamers. You heard about all the accolades. You heard about all the phenomenal stuff. We're about to get it popping. Hope you're ready for this show to get on the road right here, right now. Now, Casey, let's dive into a little bit of question number one. And again, if you're just tuning in, for those who don't know, right, uh, very experienced background myself in content creation and video game industry. And, uh, you know, I have some questions, Casey. I have some questions that need answered, all right? And so for I these I questions, <laughs> I think the, the best way to start, right, one thing that, you know, I struggle with personally, right? I mean, oh. I am doing stuff, you know, 12, 16, 18 hours a day, you know, and I got this, you know, this beautiful significant other. I love her to death. She's amazing. But sometimes she says, hey, Rain, you could use a salad. And I go, oh, what are you talking about? Are you serious? And then I look in the mirror and I'm like, damn, I could probably use a salad. But sometimes, man, I don't want to eat a damn salad, Casey. I don't want a salad, right? I want something <laughs> juicy and good and filling, right? That you know, can can also be healthy, right? Instead of me just going on, you know, DoorDash and, you know, ordering, a, you know, a, a Whopper and a large fry and Diet Coke. I get the Diet Coke, so I'm being healthy, right? But, <laughs> you know, what what is kind of, you know, and I know it's going to be a super in-depth, you know, response to this, so to help hone you in, what are some solutions, right, that can really help you know, people who are always on the go, especially, you know, gamers and content creators who, you know, are sitting down gaming nonstop, you know, what is kind of a solution or, or foods that are quick, easy to make or to order that, you know, actually can have a positive, a positive benefit on my health instead of, you know, me looking in the mirror and going, damn, I don't think that Diet Coke did it. I don't think that <laughs> Diet Coke did what it was supposed to do. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so I definitely work with a lot of people who are really busy, right? Like they have these very uh, crazy schedules like yourself, you know, like you said, working 16 hour days. And for a lot of people, nutrition is something that is almost like a chore. And the fun has been removed from it. And it's 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 a chore on the day to day. You, yeah, you have the social occasions on, you know, the weekends or when you're traveling or whatever. But um, on the day-to-day, -day, a lot of times people view it this way. And so they'll usually take two, two approaches to this. One, which I see kind of regularly, is people just say, I'm not going to eat. I'm going to skip eating. And once I am done with everything, <laughs> then I'll have, have my meal. Guilty. Um, so this... <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> so, so that's, that's uh, you know, archetype one. Uh, the, the second type that I see is, okay, well, I'm just going to opt for pure convenience foods. Uh, you know, they scroll through the DoorDash, the, you know, whatever, and, and they just like pick out something and then they, they do that. They just offer pure convenience food. <clears throat> both, both situations are, are not ideal. Um, both situations have some problems. <laughs> um, I'm in a rough spot then, brother. I did. Save me. Save me, Casey. Save yeah. me. So, 
So uh, the the first is a, a, a concept which is called uh, decision fatigue, which which simply means that the amount of choices that you have to make in a day lead to uh, fatigue. Uh, so so basically, um, it's no surprise that people are far more likely to splurge and indulge later on in the day after a tough work day, and they've been thinking all day. They're tired, and you know they don't they don't care anymore. So then they just are you know. Uh, they say, screw it. I'm just going to, you know, cruise to my local fast food joint and pick up something. Um, so, so decision fatigue plays heavily into nutrition. And really, if you have the luxury of it, uh, you need to try to take advantage of motivated you to prevent unmotivated you from making bad choices. And so usually, like, if, if we have the option to do it, we would want to plan something out in advance and be like, okay, so here's top three restaurants that I want you to order from this week. And this is exactly the food that you're going to order. That way there's no, no confusion about it. It's like, it, it can still be convenience food, right? But we're going to pick it out and we're going to make sure that we choose the exact same thing. So that way on, on checkout day, you're not like, Ooh, maybe I do want to add in that extra, you know, uh, garlic knots or something like that, you know, um, that they always flash on like the end screen to try I'm to get you to buy a little bit more. Uh, you're getting me <laughs> real hungry here, Casey. Keep going, keep going. I mean, this is so, exciting. So, yeah, so so um, the 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 real best answer is like if you can plan in advance for it, just what your week's going to look like. That's going to protect you the most. Now yeah. that that does sound intimidating to a lot of people to be like, oh man, you want me to plan out my entire week in advance, and it doesn't have to be that complicated. <laughs> like all you really have to do is be like, all right, let me let me go through my my DoorDash, my Uber Eats, whatever, and look at the top restaurants that I've been choosing from, and then let me pick a, like a, one option from each of these that that I like that I want and. You know, you can try to button it up a little bit, make it a little bit clean and be like, okay, from now on, anytime I order from this restaurant, you know, it's taco Tuesdays or whatever, you know, I'm going to get the tacos and this time I'm going to not get, you know, all the sour cream and, you know, fixings on top. Um, so, so that's choice one is like, let's plan out in advance. Now that again, that's not really sexy. That's a very unsexy answer. And so people usually hate that. Well, hold um, on, hold on, hold on. I'm not trying to interrupt <laughs> you here, but I mean, I'm not gonna lie. You just sold me. If I'm able to go to my, my wife, right. Then I'm able to say, honey. I met with dietitian superstar Casey Thomas, and he told me I can still use DoorDash. I just plan <laughs> out what I'm gonna get and go for healthier options. I mean, I'm not gonna. I'm excited. Like after yeah. this, I'm telling you, I'm about to order some healthy ass tacos. Because look, I mean, let me, let me say. So even at most classically classified uh, unhealthy like fast food places, there's still something that usually can work for whatever your goals are. And yeah. most places have something that you can get. So like if you're like, man, I'm really hankering for for X, like you can usually still even find something that's good at these places. So you can usually satisfy your cravings. Um, and yeah, so you can absolutely still still use these ordering options. I, I use them. I think it's a, a great tool, and I think that it's a you know it's it's a great advent on on uh, nutrition in the modern world. Is like we have this at our fingertips. We get access to so many different types of cuisines, uh, and you don't have to prepare them yourself, right? Uh, you can get something literally delivered to your door, and all it took you was like a click of a button. So true. Um, true. I, I think that if you smartly, it can be to tremendous benefit. And I've worked with a lot of athletes who are living the entire, uh, it's just like, okay, my, my diet is a hundred percent DoorDash. And then on top of that, maybe they, they have like, you know, one snack throughout the day, but like their, their house, you go to their house, you look in the refrigerator, there's literally nothing in it. There's nothing in the cabinets. Wow. Like I do a hundred percent DoorDash. Um, and they're still and healthy and they can still be healthy yeah if you do it wow. right you can still be healthy so so it's wow. okay to order in food it's just you have to be smart about it and you know spend 20 minutes on sunday night and just plan out like what you're what you're going to allow yourself and and eventually you don't even have to spend that much time because you just put it in like a word doc or an excel doc and you're like here's, here's my go-to options and then you just choose it on the front end so that's the that's the, the thing we're trying to alleviate here is that way on on actual day where you're tired and stressed out and you're like, man, I just did a long work day. I don't want to make any choices right now. And so you're, you're stuck scrolling through DoorDash and you're, you're like, you go through like a million pages trying yep. to find what, what, yep. what looks good. Right. Yep. <laughs> um, and, and so that's because you have that decision fatigue. And so you don't want to make a choice anymore. And so what you're going to do is you're going to save yourself time. And you're also going to protect yourself from any unhealthy options that you might've gravitated towards. Um, so, so just planning is, is uh, honestly like, the tops, but it, again, it's sometimes unsexy. <laughs> okay, so so quick recap for step one. If you can plan, definitely plan. And for all, all my DoorDash people out there, man, 
I'm, I'm a DoorDash fiend. I'll say it. I'll say it proudly and hold it to my heart. You can actually <laughs> schedule. You can schedule orders. I've done this before. I'm not going to lie. Usually <laughs> now, in a funny concept, it's more of like, you know, go out and have a really long, fun night and, you know, schedule an order that's like, you know, Pedialyte and ibuprofen and all that jazz to show up in the morning. I don't want to hear about that. I don't want to hear about that. <laughs> <laughs> but if I can incorporate it right where it's like, okay, you know, this day is going to be, you know, this meal that comes this time, this day, this day, and schedule them all out in a week that I'm going to do. I mean, my goodness. Yeah, I mean, that seems, I mean, that's awesome. Then obviously, right, like even meal prepping or planning too, which I'm sure we'll dive into all that jazz as well. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. okay, so step one, planning, that's the key. All right, step two, what do yeah. you got? Yeah. So, so that's step one. That's option one. That's honestly the best one. And that will work for most busy people. Uh, step two is if you have a little bit more time then and maybe you don't want to rely on order and options. So, so there is, uh, you know, I do want to note while yes, you can be healthy ordering in all the time on average, most restaurants are, well, actually all restaurants are businesses. And their goal is to get repeat sales and their goal is to make their food be tasty. Their goal is not to be necessarily health motivated, even if they use that as a claim. So what you'll see is that there's a lot of sneaky calories that get added into a lot of food products when you order in. So um, in general, uh, you have to be a little bit smarter when you're ordering in, in comparison to if you make that food yourself or if you buy that food yourself. Um, so, so that's just a little, little asterisk I want to throw there. Um, again, it can hundred percent totally work. And I know people who do it and I help people do it. Um, but I just want to highlight that part. And so now if you, if you do have a little bit of extra time, uh, you know, m meal prepping, yes, I would say that actually can work for people who can do it. But more often than not, I find that people are in this space in esports and content creators. I would say that's usually not a viable option. Um, it takes a very Agreed. motivated individual to, to have, you know, 10 glass containers and perfectly portion them out and make all of their stuff for a couple <laughs> hours on Sunday. <laughs> um, I haven't, I've only encountered several individuals who are willing to do this in this space. And, yeah. uh, it's true. It does actually save you time on the week. Like if you, if you, if you actually add up the time you spend doing, you spend a couple hours, one day of the week, and you know, you can pick out exactly what you want. You can make it to your flavor preferences. You'll save money, you'll save time. But despite that, despite that fact in this space, I have seen that most people will still say no, or they'll try it for like a week and then say no. Uh, so, so, you know, it could be tempting to go to some websites and just look up a bunch of meal prep recipes and all these things. But um, in my experience, I've seen that a lot of people just default on this and that it doesn't work. So my, my, my next go to for this space is to find options that are just super, super, super easy to make that can help satisfy these things. Like I'm talking okay. one step recipes. Um, and this seems to go a lot better for people. So it's like, okay, I'm going to get like a high protein cereal, I'm going to have some yogurt with Ooh. some berries. I'm going to have scram oh, scrambled eggs is probably like the highest level of, of uh, cooking for these individuals usually. Okay, nice, uh, nice. Uh, <laughs> uh, you, you can whip up a smoothie very easily. You can have sandwiches very easily. Uh, there's like a lot of pre-made meals and things that you can buy from grocery stores. You just literally throw them into the microwave um, and, and they're good to go. And what I would even recommend is there's a lot of meal prep companies out there that'll do the meal prepping for you in contrast to you doing it yourself. And I think that this is something that works out really well for a lot of content creators and esports athletes is you just buy, uh, you know, you get on like a little subscription, they send you 10 meals a week or, you know, 14 meals a week, whatever you want. And I always keep like five to 10 in my freezer and they hold for months. And whenever I have a rainy day, I don't feel like cooking, don't feel like ordering, uh, just pop in the microwave, boom, you have a quality meal ready to go. Wow. Um, Okay, real, real quick on that, real quick on yeah. that. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Who, yeah, all yeah. right, because there's there's a ton, a ton of these, you know, delivery meal services now. Do you have like one, two, or three that like you, you vouch for that you support? Like, okay, wait, these guys are actually healthy. They do it the right way. Da -da -da -da. Yeah. I, I have one, which is my personal favorite, okay. and I'll tell you that in a little bit, but because what even with that with that vouching, I'm going to give you guys like a little hack, and this is this is what I'd actually recommend you do instead. Um, so, so the real recommendation is almost every single one, especially if you're in the LA area, but almost every single one of these companies has sign on deals. 
and or they're affiliated with like Groupon, Living Social, or whatever those other like coupon places are. Mm. Um, m- like 99% of these companies have those kind of sign on deals or those coupons that it can be if you just Google it on the front end. And so what you can do, and this is what I encourage a lot of my clients to do, is sign up for one of these, get the free, you know, get the coupon, get the discount for the first week of meals. And what you'll be doing is you'll be eating these like high quality meals for literally like five bucks a pop. Like you're not going to top like five bucks a pop for a meal. Right. Yeah. And then you just cancel your subscription after the first week and then go to the next company. And you can literally do if you're in a concentrated area like L.A. area, you can literally do this for like a year before you run out of companies. (laughs) And (laughs) so you're eating for like five bucks, five to ten bucks a meal every single week like i mean you're gonna save so much money and then what this allows you to do is this allows you because most of them are high quality this allows you to find a company that you actually really like Mm -hmm. and then just stick with it once you once you land on it um so that that's the real recommendation is like just cycle through them until you find one that you like and you can abuse these deals and then you know get high quality meals super cheap again it's two minutes in the microwave like you got to have two minutes to to make it yeah that's that's genius casey that's absolutely (laughs) genius. thank you yeah. Um, and then you, you said, okay, what, what do I actually recommend? My, my personal favorite in the LA area is, uh, eat naked LA. Actually. Um, I've, uh, I've worked with them since my time in traditional athletics and they've bent over backwards to make accommodations for me. And, uh, wow. honestly, they, they have really high quality food that you can customize. And, um, I've been to their kitchen and it, like, it actually started out as a restaurant, I think. And then they gravitated towards just doing meal preps and shipping it out. So like, it's like really, really good food. Um, but, but there's, there's plenty of others. Like, I'm not trying to say, like, I'm not trying to endorse one particular company. Like there's literally so many, I know a lot of people really like factor these days. Um, I was bummed when freshly went out of business because freshly, Mm -hmm. I used to really like freshly a lot too. Um, what are some other ones? Uh, anyway, there's a lot, honestly, most of them are kind of the same. Um, most of them are very health focused and you, you know, it's a protein, a starch and a veg, like it's pretty standard setup and it's more about finding the flavor combinations that you actually enjoy. Um, there's some bougie ones too. I think, uh, I tried one. I, yeah, like I, I, there was one in, uh, what was it called? I think it was called methodology. Um, and it was like the meals came in like little Mason jars or something. And then you got to keep the Mason jars. Uh, but it was like, it it was like 30 bucks a pot for a meal. So anyway, 30 uh, bucks. Yeah. It was, it was a little bit on the high. It was like chef made. Okay. 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 (laughs) Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, I mean, it just depends on what your budget is and what you're looking to do. I, I, I have, I would say that for quality and, um, flexibility, like best paint for buck and like best flavor, the one that I landed on was eat naked LA. And I've used those for like a lot of teams okay. that I've worked with, but, um, again, there's plenty of other ones. Just try all the sign on bonuses and you'll find one that you like eventually. And, and so for- that's. Yeah. No, I love that. And for and for quick to scratch to everybody too. That, that, that's not a paid ad, not a paid endorsement. Like that's a hundred percent authenticity from Casey. Just so everybody knows, right? That's <laughs> that's truthful. Casey's always has high character, very phenomenal integrity. Trust me on a lot of the deals we we've worked on together. He is top of yeah. the list on doing the right thing. I, I, a lot of people slap me on the wrist because I'm really notoriously hard to try to make deals with because I usually am just, my standards are, are what they are. And I'm sorry, sometimes. No, no. I mean, it's, it's what makes you, you, and it's what we love about you, dude. So I love it. Um, okay. I actually had a, so this one, in my opinion, I think this one's going to be like the most fun question, right? Cause this okay. is where I'm sure you have a ton of experience, especially within creativity in this general realm. And so I'm going to paint the picture here. Okay. You got, mm-hmm. you got. Timmy, all right? I'm Timmy, okay? okay? Timmy is about 22 years old, roughly. Um, loves League of Legends. Loves League of Legends. Is grinding. I'm talking 16 hours a day, you know, and he, let's, you know, he, he, he saw this podcast and was like, okay, yeah, you know what I'm going to, I'm going to do, you know, Eat Naked LA. I like that. I'm going to get that going. But okay. man, you know, in between these league matches, you know, Timmy, Timmy gets some cravings, man. Timmy, Timmy, Timmy needs some snacks. And Timmy is, <laughs> oh, dude, Timmy is, he loves his Mountain Dew. He loves his Doritos, Cheetos, mm-hmm. Fritos, anything that ends in an O, Sour Patch Kids, all that, anything, anything yeah. that he can eat super fast and kind of give that hunger, but also taste good. So, you know, for Timmy here, right, and all the Timmys out there in the world, you know, what are some snacks that are, and I'm going to give you three parameters here. Okay. Taste good. They got to taste good. They got to okay. taste good. Okay. That's the first one. Tastes good. Two, okay. they're easy to get. You know, I, I don't have to, you know, ship them from wherever the heck. 
at, to get them to my house or whatever. I can go to the store maybe and combine things to make this or, or whatever the heck. It's easy. Mm-hmm. And, you know, also drinks. And, and, I, and, and it can be anything. It can't be water. So I know you're going to say water is greatest drink ever, which I agree. But <laughs> any, like, adaptations to water or anything that you can do to water, sure, that works. But those mm-hmm. are the three things. I'm trying to replace Mountain Dew. I'm trying to replace Doritos, Fritos, anything that ends with the O's. And yeah. I want to make sure it's something that I can I can go get locally. Like, if I go to the store, I can order it off DoorDash, delivered, whatever the heck. So what do you got for yeah. me, Casey? I know this one's a little tough, probably. Well, not for you. For me, I mean, I'm lost. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I think snacks is a hot topic. Um, so there's there's a couple of things to think about when you're thinking about a snack, which is um, what what is what is this serving like? What purpose is this serving? And so for some people, they just want pure like it's purely hedonic, like they just want pleasure, like the pleasure of something that tastes good, and that's. That, I would argue, is a treat. That's not necessarily a snack. Mm. So it's like, is this a treat or is this like a snack with a functional purpose in mind? Like, (laughs) is it like, you know, I'm I'm hungry versus I'm craving something. And there's actually a fun test that I have sometimes people do is uh, uh, where they will get some something. Tell me something that Timmy doesn't like mildly. Oh, Timmy. Like, Timmy. Like, Hates. Carrot sticks or something? Carrots, yep. Zach was he hates carrots. He hates celery. Anything yeah. green, he's not about it, bro. <laughs> Timmy ain't about the green. Yeah. So so what I would uh do is I'd have people do a week test where what they'll do is they'll put their sour patch kids on like one side of their desk and then they put the the carrot sticks on the other side of the desk. <laughs> and so basically it's like something you you kind of dislike and then something you you really want. Yeah, yeah. And the the way to test yourself to see if you actually are hungry versus if you're craving something is I'll let you eat the sour patch kids, but you have to eat all of the carrots first. And if you're willing to eat the carrots, then it says okay, maybe you're actually hungry. Uh, and if you're not willing to eat the carrots, then, you know, that says maybe you're just craving something. Oh. Um, so it's a little bit of a way to BS test yourself and, like, see in your own headspace, like, am I actually hungry or am I actually craving something? Um, That's big brain. But, <laughs> but, but okay, so so uh, with snacks, again, um, I, I like to draw a distinction between, a, like, a functional snack and yep. a treat item. Yep. And if, if it's treats, you, you can allocate yourself some treats, but I will say that for most individuals – uh, if treats can hold you back from your goals sometimes, if you're going too overboard with it, uh, usually you can buy yourself more treats with more exercise. So like the more exercise you do, you've earned yourself some more sugar, salty, whatever kind of stuff that you want. Um, if you're not exercising and you're relatively sedentary, then unfortunately your wiggle room for treat allowances is a little bit smaller. And so you'll have to be a little bit more smart about it but real quick real quick uh, real quick yes. buzzword sedentary yes. what the hell does that mean <laughs> uh if, if you're not moving around a lot so if you're okay. stuck behind the computer 16 hours a day yep. um and you're, you're not getting up and like stretching you know every, every now and again or just like standing up to get some blood flowing or you know exercising you know a couple times a week uh going for walks seeing the sun you know those kind of things um <laughs> uh I, I would classify you as, as sedentary and i know okay. in this space a lot of people are relatively sedentary but i will say that um i've seen a positive shift in this where a lot of people are starting to acknowledge like hey i should probably be moving around a little bit more and they'll start to allocate you know hey i'm gonna do like 20 30 minutes exercise you know every other day um cool but uh, anyway so uh the more activity you do the more treats you're allowed the less activity you do, the less treats you're allowed. And for snacks, now there's plenty of snack and taste good is a very subjective thing. So it depends on what you think tastes good. Um, mm. But what I would say is where people run into the most issues with snack items is when it, it I'm going to get it slightly sciencey here, but I'll, I'll explain, okay. um, is okay. when it's an isolated macronutrient. So if you have something that's like a pure fat or if you have something that's a pure carb, usually you can run into problems and so examples of this are like you have a bag of chips like you put a bag of chips in front of me like i'm gonna eat the whole bag sorry like i'm not gonna i'm not gonna stop uh you put uh just a like pistachios like i'm gonna keep eating the entire bag of pistachios that's pure fat um you put uh any kind of like candy bar you're probably gonna eat the whole thing pure carb um so so a lot of the the traditional snack items are isolated macronutrients and what I find really helps and adds a layer of functionality to this is if you 
pair macros for your snacks and specifically protein plus something else. So you would want like a protein plus a fat or a protein plus a carb. And this is going to be a lot more satisfying and usually satisfy a lot of those same cravings. Um, so good examples of this would be like, you want to have some beef jerky and some nuts, like you could do it that way. Or maybe you want to have uh, yogurt with, um, you know, some chopped berries on top, uh, protein plus a carb or pro protein plus a fat. Um, Protein also seems to get a little bit of a pass as well as uh, fresh or sorry, any any like raw veg or fruit if you want. So I know you, Timmy hates carrot sticks, but, yep. you know, if, he, if he's fine with like an apple or a banana or something like that, that's good. That's fine. Um, otherwise, you're probably looking at trying to pair some things. And so for more simple things, you could look at just like a protein bar or, uh, you know, if, if we're looking for a fluid, maybe it's a, a protein shake. Uh, you could do those kind of things. And that should have a suitable satiating effect, like make you feel more full and satisfied in contrast to, um, you know, eating a whole bag of chips, which, you know, you'll probably still be hungry on the back end of that. Wow. Um, so that's, that's, that's one, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, is, is pair, pair up your macronutrients. Okay. And, um, uh, you mentioned, you mentioned fluid. Well, sorry, I'll, I'll pause there actually is. I don't know if you want no, to. No, no, I mean, that makes sense. Like, I'm thinking, like, so one of my favorite snacks, right? Okay, this is, I, I grew up, I was born in Dallas, Texas. So before I say this, a lot of people, especially my friends, they think I'm, like, really weird for eating this this combination. Um, but I'm a huge carrot sticks with peanut butter guy. Like, that is Ooh. one of my favorite snacks. And it's, that is weird. It's deli it, See, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. But, like, in the South... You know, you pull out, it'll be like a barbecue. And you know, like how like most people have like the platter, right? Where it's like charcuterie cheeses, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> You'll have a giant jar of peanut butter and a big bag of carrots. You'll just see people. Mm, mm. I, I can, I can imagine it. And I actually, I'm not hating it. Like I'm, I'm imagining those two plates. I don't, I don't mind it. And have you ever had it? I've not had it, but I mean, I've had like, you know, celery and peanut butter. Would you and try it? I, I've had carrots. Like I haven't tried it, but it sounds like, and I love peanut butter and I like carrots. So, but would you, know. you would you try it? I'm down. I, okay, hey, I'm down to try could literally we, any food item. <laughs> could we do? Would you like off topic here? But would you do like a like a five second video reaction just to you trying carrots with peanut butter? Yeah, oh, well, I need to buy some carrots, but I'm down. <laughs> okay. Easy. Well, I'll, I'll expense it. I got you. Carrots are on okay. me, Casey. Carrots are on right. me. Hey, I'm down. I'm down. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, yes, yeah, so I think I understand, right? You just you wanna you wanna just pair you wanna pair stuff together, right? That's that's yeah. the gist. Yeah, and ideally you're getting either some kind of like veg or fruit or yeah. some kind of protein. If you're having one of those three in there with your snack, then then awesome. Um, if if it's something a little bit more separate from this again maybe you're venturing into the treat category and then you need to be a little bit more careful mm. i'm not saying don't have your doritos ever yeah like yeah, i really yeah. don't care like you can have doritos if you want to um just acknowledge it for what it is like hey this is this is what i'm purely doing this for pleasure it's it's me i just want to feel the the awesome taste that enters my mouth when i when i have this thing you know and i think uh, that's that's why i love you because you know what you're, you're not you're a you're a realistic dietitian i think is what i'll say here like <laughs> you're not like never eat this again <laughs> you're gonna die don't put this in your body like you, you're, you're realistic it's like look man you know i'm sure you, especially with you working in esports for so damn long like yeah. you know you know people got their vices their treats their snacks they gotta have absolutely absolutely yeah and, and so where i draw the, the line really is if this particular thing is stopping you from hitting your goals that's that's the line it's like okay well this is the thing that's holding you back so we have to modify this thing and if it's not stopping you from hitting your goals, I, I don't care, really. I mean, like, I can talk to you about optimizations and things like that. But if this is something that gives you pleasure, uh, you know, across your life and makes you happier, like, I want you to do it. I want you to be happy still. So that's that's, that's a big, awesome. uh, big thing. You're, and, and you're motivating me. <laughs> um, I'll actually say something which is kind of tangentially related to this. And then, you know, I'm going to take a mini left turn and then I'll come okay. back to the other question about the fluids. Okay. Um, which is there's there's tremendous evidence now about your physiological state and how well your body processes certain nutrients. So what I mean by this is like, if you enter a meal and you're like 
tilt it out of your mind because you know your bot lane was feeding or whatever and uh you're pissed off and like you just threw your computer against the wall and your computer's broken and you know your girlfriend just dumped you and like all this stuff and then you go eat a meal and then you go eat a meal and you're in this mental state of just like pure frustration that meal is not going to be processed in the exact same way as oh it's a sunny beautiful day i'm happy i'm with my friends and with my family i'm calm collected cool and uh and then you eat that exact same meal so you could have two exactly identical meals but depending on your current physiological state your ability to process that is drastically different and people who are stressed out or are distracted or you know uh you know otherwise like in a negative state are going to have impairments in their ability to process those foods and so something that is um uh would be healthy could actually become unhealthy and the flip side could also be true something that is unhealthy unhealthy could actually become healthy and this is why a lot of the early literature looking at uh, alcohol consumption you know people are always like oh isn't a glass of wine a day really good and you know that was what the literature said but yeah um the actual answer physiologically is no wine has no redeeming qualities that you couldn't otherwise get from grapes however However, most people who this data was based on, drinking wine was a very social family community type event. Like they would come together, they'd get together, they'd be happy, they'd be social, they'd be connected with each other, they'd share a glass of wine. It was a very happy, positive moment. And then these people were living longer because they were doing this happy social thing. It wasn't necessarily because of the wine, but the wine tied it together. And so you have something that is unhealthy that can become healthy and you have something the flip side, which is something that, you know, you could eat carrot sticks and you could actually turn carrot sticks bad. Uh, so, you know, That's um, crazy. Yeah, <laughs> what? so I just want to like highlight, it's like, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, if you're, if you're tilted or, or something, you know, be, be maybe a little bit more careful with, uh, uh what you're eating and things like that. Uh, if you're snacking in between, um, uh, anyway, so, so there's that, uh, and, and then I know you mentioned the, the fluid piece as well too, right? Yeah. So like, yeah. what, what can we do for fluids? In general, if you can minimize your liquid calorie consumption, that does seem to be very helpful. And there's very little redeeming value in like sodas and sports drinks and things like that. Um, that's that's true. Now, I know people, and I actually have one of my best dietitian friends. I'm not going to name his name, but he knows who he is. Oh, good. Uh, <laughs> he actually he's a dietitian, right? He literally does not drink water at all. Like 0% of the fluids he consumes are water. And he says he hates the taste of water. And his his go to <laughs> in a day is he'll buy a couple liters of diet Mountain Dew or diet sprites. And he just drinks those like that's literally his his, you know, other people are carrying around little hydro flasks with water. He's carrying around like his little two liter of uh, of diet soda. And that's that's his pure no. fluid consumption. I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm not shitting you. <laughs> what? <laughs> And I'm, I'm like, bro, this is so bad. And he's like, I know, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I know people, even in the health space, who yeah. who are just like, I need a fluid that tastes good. And they just say, I don't like water. So physiologically, water is king. Like water is yep. tops. That you, yep. you cannot beat water. Um, there are a couple other fluids that I'm particularly fond of for, for health reasons. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm looking at... Um, uh, black coffee and unsweet tea. Um, those two are particularly health promoting and they've been shown to extend lifespan and have other sorts of fun benefits of people like caffeine. You see me, wow. I'm chugging some coffee right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so those, those three fluids seem to be particularly beneficial. Um, other types of fluids that have calories, uh, there are some downsides to them, which is generally, uh, when it's a fluid form, your body doesn't have to work as hard to digest it. And so what that means is your body sees more of the calories that are in it. If you were to say have like one orange versus orange juice, if you eat an orange, your body has to work to to digest it, break it down, all this kind of stuff, and then transport it. That costs energy. So the net calories that your body sees is kind of low. But if you drink orange juice, your body doesn't have to do any work at all. All the work has already been taken care of. So the net calories that you see from that are much higher. And then we also know that liquid calories have very little satiety. So a lot of people who have liquid calories, they tend to be uh, at increased risk for becoming overweight and obese. So liquid calories provide very little satiety. 
And now, on the other hand, if you're someone who is really struggling to gain weight, then adding in liquid calories is actually a good move. Uh, so liquid calories helps out because it has no satiety. But for most people, uh, liquid calories can be problematic. Okay, so um, real, I, I got to pause real yeah. quick, real quick. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Like, um, so, okay. I was, I don't know how to, how do I want to explain this? Um, <laughs> I was, me personally, right? So this is back when I played college football, I, I was jacked, ripped, right? To the max. Yeah. But I was like, I, my body probably hated me is what I'll say, right? Like sure. I was on, I was full keto, like no carb ever. Mm -hmm. No, never touching a carb. But it, it, the interesting thing I want to touch on here, and it, none of that actually matters, but to give you the perspective on why I was also doing this was, um, for breakfast, um, and pretty much any time I needed a super quick meal, I would mm -hmm. always drink Slim Fast. Ah. Every time I'd make like a little Slim Fast shake and I drink that. But now the, the question, the reason I'm asking this, right, is that if obviously Slim Fast is made to lose weight, right, but it's in this liquid form, mm -hmm. is that is that like kind of contradicting to like the actual yeah. purpose of what they're making? Yeah, it, it actually is. And um, they've done analyses on these, uh, they'll call them like meal replacement beverages and yeah. meal, meal replacement bars. And because of the formulation, because a lot of them are beverages and because a lot of them are bars, um, it works because it puts you on a calorie deficit. So like hypothetically, if you're like, I was going to have, you know, McDonald's and I was going to eat 1500 calories and instead I had a can of Slim Fast. <laughs> Obviously, you went from 1,500 calories to like, I think those were like three, 400 calories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the, the dark chocolate Royale was my favorite flavor, by the yep, way. Of the yep, <laughs> amen. Mine too, amen. Yeah. Um, so if you went from that to, to this other thing, then you've cut your calories. But the formulation of it is in such a way that it has very little satiety. So it's inherently like antithetical to its purpose. And so what, we, what we've seen when we look back on um, the effectiveness of uh, meal replacement beverages and strategies, is that those largely fail over time. So the longer you do them, the increased likelihood of failing uh, you get because it's in liquid form. It doesn't provide any satiety. And same thing with the bars. The bars are so concentrated. Um, you could have uh, a very similar meal with the same calories that's like this big and feel very full, feel very satisfied, but instead you're given this little dinky bar and you're given a little can of you know protein shake. And between yeah. the two, it's just, it's just unsatisfying. I'm not saying that they're unhealthy or that they can't get the results, but yeah, in the yeah, long yeah. term, um, it doesn't fill you up and people will more more than likely, they tend to have uh, relapses where they go back to their previous patterns because of that. So those those have wow. largely been, you don't see them as much these days, right? Like we yeah, only yeah. are handing those out in the hospital. It's like, you know, they have the little insurers or whatever. Um, and so th those are not as popular these days because they were kind of a bust, mainly because of the formulation. No. What a world. They do they do taste good though. And so if what you're using them world. as like a quick little protein drink or something, maybe yeah. it's like post workout. Like it'd be more appropriate to have the slim fast. It's like, oh, I just finished my football practice or whatever. Yeah. Let me go have a little protein shake now because my stomach can't handle a full meal. Yeah. So let me have this and then you know that'll hold me over. And then when I can my stomach is ready to go, then I'll have a full meal. Um but yeah, so as as like a weight loss tool, it's it's been kind of shown to be a bust, unfortunately. Wow. It blew my mind. Blow my mind with all this stuff. I, I feel like I, up is down, right is left. You know, the whole world shifted here. Okay, so um, we're, we're getting towards the end of this here. So we've gotten step one, right, option one. We've gotten option two, right? And then we've also talked about, you know, drinks and snacks and diving and all that stuff. Now, I didn't know, was there any more on fluids you wanted to touch up on? Yeah, I would say for fluids, if um, hydration is so important in this space, for esports and for content creation and i would say that over half easily over half like probably more than this wow are chronically dehydrated chronic and now, yeah chronically on, on. for my simple mind what's the <laughs> i know i understand chronic right but like how intense are we like chronic chronic or just like chronic like every single day they have uh probably what we call like subclinical dehydration. So like, wow. it's not so severe that you're like pissing like brown urine, you know, uh, <laughs> and your kidneys are shutting down, yeah. but it's, it's a little bit deficient and your kidneys are having to work a little bit harder and your body is running with a little bit less fuel than it should be. And your blood is a little bit more thick 
and it, rather than nice and fluid that we want it to be. Um, so you're, you're having these like efficiency issues because you are a little bit dehydrated every single day. Um, most people are in this category in this, this population, I would say they're chronically, they're a little bit dehydrated every single day of their life and you don't feel the immediate impacts, but there will be long-term consequences. Like that's just a fact. Um, and what you can do is if you just take your hydration seriously for, you can adjust your hydration status in 24 to 48 hours. So if you take your hydration wow. seriously for, for just a couple of days, um, you know, if you do like a pre -test, post test, like where you assess yourself, you know, week one to week two, and you see how you feel, I guarantee you're going to feel like a different person if you are taking your hydration seriously. And what I want to say to that end is because hydration is so important, if you are going from suboptimal levels, and you need some kind of fluid that isn't water in order to kick you over that, I'm still for that because hydration is worth it. So it's worth the fact that, okay, I need some juice to get me over because I otherwise I'm not going to drink water. It's like, yeah. okay, I, I accept that because it's getting your hydration status better. So I, uh, of the two evils, I would rather you be well hydrated and drinking some suboptimal fluids rather than being dehydrated chronically and not drinking any fluids whatsoever. So I love it. Um, you're Try negotiable. To your, your... You're negotiable. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I always, always negotiable. Um, it's about, it's about, I mean, look, uh, just, just as like a little preface is like, honestly, and this is like a big belief of mine is like, mm -hmm. I, I don't care where you're at. Everybody is at a different starting point and you are where you're at. You have, you, you know, you were dealt the hand, you were dealt with your genetics, with your parents, uh, your own background, your own environment, whatever, whatever. Um, you are where you're at and there is no guilt associated with that whatsoever. Everybody starts at a different place. Um, now, if you want to be somewhere else, though, and you know that you need to make some changes, but you're not making changes, then I then I hold that against you. Um, but if you're happy with where you're at, then I, I don't care. But, but at the end of the day, I want to meet you where you're at. And I think that you should meet yourself wherever you're at and look for incremental improvements. If you try to 180 your diet overnight and just like do this perfection thing where like you, you get, you know, I, I have to do everything exactly right. Cause I'm trying to min max. And you know, a lot of esports players are like that. Um, it just doesn't work. Like they do it for a week or two, maybe a month, and then they fall off the wagon and then they have these cyclical patterns that just never get broken. Um, but, but it's definitely more about incremental. And so if you, if you want to take your hydration more seriously, just be like, okay, I'm going to drink one extra cup of whatever today and you're fine. You know, that's, that's good. I'm, I'm happy with that. Um, so yeah, sorry. Those little me on a soapbox. No, but, no, that, uh, I mean, I love that. that was good. Uh, Very insightful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so one thing that I'll say is if, uh, I'll just add on this little note because a lot of times a lot of players are reaching for sugar-free beverages or, mm -hmm. um, artificial sweetened beverages in order to enhance the, the taste profile of whatever it is they're drinking. Um, if you need this again, either to enhance your hydration or if you need this, because otherwise the alternative is like, I'm going to drink full sugar soda or I have uncontrolled diabetes, or it's going to put my calories too high or whatever. Mm -hmm. If you need artificial sweeteners to, to help you, I'm okay with that. If it, if the alternative is worse. Um, <laughs> now if, if you have the luxury, I would say, try to have your artificial sweeteners in isolation and away from any kind of actual carbohydrate. So what I mean by this is like, don't have a diet soda and a sandwich together if possible. Um, or don't have like a, you know, a protein powder scoop in a smoothie that has the artificial sweetener in it because that can, uh, anyway, the, the consequences of this are it can cause some dysregulation with how your body processes carbs and also, uh, lead to insulin resistance, which is basically diabetes. So you That's can make good. yourself diabetes by having a bunch of artificial sweeteners with real sweeteners. So make sure that if you are having, if you have the option to do it, um, try to have your artificial sweeteners away from actual things with carbs in it. Wow. What the hell? I don't know if that made sense. Sorry. No, 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 it does. It's, it's just like, now nah, I'm like, I'm like scared. I'm like questioning. I'm like, oh shit. Did I, did I, have, did I, did I have a diet Coke with a sandwich? Did I, did I, you know, did I, did I, what I have for breakfast? Uh, I don't know. Okay. So rule of thumb, artificial sweetener manageable as long as it's not with carbs correct yeah uh your body gets confused by because an artificial sweetener is inherently not supposed to cause like a rise in your blood sugar right like okay. it's 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 meant to just be 
the taste without causing a real rise in blood sugar. Yeah. But your body gets confused if you pair this this thing that doesn't cause a rise in blood sugar with something that actually causes a rise in blood sugar and it loses its predictive powers. So your body will be unable to determine now whether something coming in is real sugar or not and how to accurately respond to that with you know your corresponding like insulin and other hormones and chemistry. So it gets really confused if you pair the artificial with the real. And if you're going to have the artificial have it alone, that causes no problems whatsoever. So your body is totally chill with this. It's like, I know this is artificial. I know it for what it is. I'm chilling. But if you pair it with something that does something like yeah. a real sugar, then all of a sudden your body's like, whoa, 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 hold the phone. Like, which one is causing my blood sugar to rise? I don't yeah. know. Is it is it this or is it this? And then it just gets confused and then everything goes to hell. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So be careful with that. <laughs> Huge round of applause, folks. Casey Thomas. The dietitian <laughs> king of esports, the man, the myth, the legend, blessing us with all his knowledge on today's first episode. I'll be honest. I mean, I, I think this was a massive success. I've learned so much. I can't wait to have this, you know, chopped up into short form, long form content for the rest of our community and all that jazz. Um, yeah, Case, you, you have any final thoughts here? Anything else you want to share at all before we close it out? Uh, I would say, you know, the big thing that I like to push is uh you should care about your nutrition there's a lot of reasons to care about it but at the same time i want you to have fun with it um i, I had a blast being here today you know have fun with your nutrition don't make it a chore try to plan it out uh try to have fun with it still keep it you know social and light and uh uh yeah if uh, anybody has any questions or wants to talk on the back end more than happy to help out but uh you know i enjoy talking with you today rain and i think it was fun i think it was a blast so you know happy to do more <laughs> fantastic brother i love it thank you so much thank you so much um, yeah, folks, uh, Casey Thomas, check him out, man. The GOAT, the absolute GOAT. Connect with him in our 1HP Discord, our Epi Discord. Uh, all links to websites, Twitters, Discords are all in the description below. Uh, if you have any questions, any comments whatsoever, feel free to drop them on the video and, you know, I'll, I'll send them directly to Casey in his DMs. Casey loves talking about this stuff, right? So just, if oh, you I can't do. tell, yeah. if you can't tell, right, he's, he's a People big fan. People always giving me the kill sign. They're like, shut up, please. <laughs> <laughs> Well, all love, man. It's been an absolute blast. And, folks, until next time, this has been Rain, aka Rain Raps, and Casey Thomas, registered dietitian of 1HP. We'll see y'all next time. Stay lit, stay blessed, and peace.